Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are once again looking at Basingstoke Comic Con uh, 2024 May and I just say that so you know when it was done so uh, at on Sunday uh, me and my daughter Katie were there there is a picture there somewhere of us with uh, Richard Dean Anderson and Amanda Toppin ta Toppin? Tappin um, <laughs> awful what kind of fan are you uh, so uh there was another panel an even longer panel so if you watch the atlantis panel this one is about 30 minutes and brad uh water amanda and richard are uh asked lots of questions by lots of people that have tented uh this con so i wanted to share that um Firstly, I apologize because there may be heads floating in front at some point. There may be shaking. I had to hold a camera for 30 odd minutes. It's a long time holding a camera for that long. And uh, I'm a big guy. It's not like I've got lots of muscles uh, to do these things. So um, I hope you enjoy this. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments with what sort of questions you would have asked uh, these fine folks um, from Stargate SG-1, which was, um, you know, one of my favorite shows back in the day. I still love it now. I've still got uh, the set. Uh, so, in fact, I probably should. I feel like I should be watching it again. Richard Dean Anderson and Amanda Tapper. Take a seat, take a couple of Good seats. Idea. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay up on the stage with you. you would love Please. A little mind. A little, little mind. mind. Little Walter mind. Minded. Come on, man. Little mindage. All right. You would um, barely have made it through the gate if it weren't for... Uh, <laughs> so I want to just say, I want to just say, I've never been on stage with, uh, with uh, Brad, Amanda, and Richard at the same time. And uh, just want to thank you guys for uh, adding so much to my life. Taking me around the world. Amazing. Oh, Richard's found a dog on the floor somewhere. It's, by the way, Rick, if you do see another dog, remember that the people on stage are just watching you playing with that dog. So I, for me, I remember uh, getting a call from my agent a long time ago and just saying, they're making uh, Stargate the series. Uh, go and audition for it. Don't fuck it up because <laughs> it, 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 may, it may be it may be recurring, maybe a recurring role. And in Canada, for an actor, that means two episodes <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you put on your resume. You go, I showed up, and then I recurred. I occurred, then I recurred, two episodes in a row. Uh, but ten years later, here we are, like an amazing Yay. show. Yay! 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 It's Denise, incredible people. And that's all the time we have, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thanks very much. So I just want to open it up now for all the questions you have for anybody on stage, uh, individual or cast. There's one right over there. Let's go. Where? Where are we? What are we doing? Do we have? Oh, right there. Right there. Hi guys. Hi. Um, going back to last panel where we were talking about um, female actresses and. Careers? Was it ever a consideration after season six finished and then we got a season seven and then we got a season eight to when they were talking of who would be the fourth member of the new SG1 team to, for example, get Jonas back and let Sam lead a troop of three guys instead of just bringing in a new guy. Yeah, was there ever any consideration of having <laughs> Sam Carter lead her own team, SG1? Yay. Gary, what do you think? <laughs> I think there was. I was in on those meetings, but uh, I was constantly shut down. Just so you know, Amanda. I will tell you what. We did we did some discussions, and, and uh, there were lots of discussions, but I wasn't running SG1 in seasons 9 and 10. Uh, that was Rob, so I'll blame him. So now we know. Here. So. 
That's a good answer. Brad. Excellent question. <laughs> oh, thank you. It means you noticed. All right. Do we have a great question? Right there? I appreciate it. Hello, guys. Um, quick question for all four of you. Um, probably more Brad. Um, the scene I love best, a very short sequence of Jack and Teal fishing. <laughs> Who thought up the idea of there being no fish in the pond? Was that an ad libra? I don't recall, actually. I wish I did so I could be funny right now. <laughs> but I don't. I think it was a line of dialogue that I put in 2010, where he says, where I can retire to a nice house with a pond with no fish. And I think that's where it came from. I think. Good, good to know. It's one and of I the... may have just made that up too. Yes, right. So, but I that's what a, I do. A very quick one to end. Uh, the great, late Don S. Davis. What was it like working with him? Don was... <laughs> He would describe himself as 200 pounds of romp and stomp in Missouri. <laughs> Bold man. Um, he was so gentle and he was so easy to make laugh. Like, I think some of our best games on set were trying to get Don to laugh. Because uh, he'd do it so easily and then he'd get all embarrassed. But he was, he was lovely and, and really strong and he was like a very protective of all of us. Especially Tarawana, he was really very protective of us. Don's voice, too. I mean, come on. When we were casting, Jonathan and I said, we had just worked with Don in an Outer Limits episode, and we went, oh my God, that voice. He's, he just, it just says leader. And uh, so, I think he was our only, our only choice, wasn't he? The what? I think Don was our only choice for general. Yeah, I don't think you went anywhere else. You couldn't, in retrospect. Yeah. Uh, Don never knew how to uh, talk to me. <laughs> I, because I think at first, I, I would make him laugh. It was so easy to make laugh, as you said. And But after that, yeah. Well, um, but after a while, it, it got to be a little problematic in a funny way, because anything I said, he would wait for a, either a punchline or a, a twist, and I might just be relaying a, a call time or something. Yeah, like I'd be doing that. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, he, uh, he was a great guy. He actually st uh, stood in and may have done some stunts for uh, MacGyver. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there was one shot where MacGyver goes out in the ocean into one of the bays in Vancouver. And, um, and then the boat blows up, the little rowboat that he's rowing blows up. And the dummy we used was so floppy and so skinny, nobody bought it. Because Don was a hefty guy. Strong, let's put it that way. Don, Don told Stunt. me that he did 500 push-ups a day. That's what he told me. I haven't done that many in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you something that you probably don't know about Don that's not really SG related, but uh, I, you know, knowing a bunch of actors back in Vancouver, I knew people who were uh, students, drama students, out at the University of British Columbia, and they told me that Don, way back, was like a theater set carpenter. He worked out there at the university while they were all studying to be actors, and Don just kept falling into gigs, and he'd show up and he'd go, oh, I just got a commercial, and they'd go, Oh, really, Don? Oh, that's weird. Oh, nice, good for you. And then he'd show up and go, oh, another commercial. And he just kept getting, get, and they were desperately trying to get work and, you know, thinking that they were going to be these, you know, incredibly dramatic actors. And then the, and then one day he showed up and said, well, I just got a job on a show named Twin Peaks. And they, they just about died. They couldn't believe that Don, who is this? The carpenter. Uh, the carpenter. The set carpenter was like getting all these gigs and then he got SG-1 and it was like, okay, well Don's, that's his journey, you know, but it was so funny to hear these actors 
not expecting Don to do anything, and he did. He sure did, for a long time. an experience with the fan, meeting someone. That's a dodgy question to ask at a convention. You know what, I, let me, I'll start because it's easier for me because it was very recent. I have, I have and, I'll, and it's not specific to one person, but I have never sat down for two days and signed autographs. I didn't think anybody ever wanted the writer's autograph before. And it was so nice, and it wasn't weird at all, but it, I, I kept blushing, because people, I blush at the drop of a hat. And, and, and I must have looked like Mr. Pink up there every time I was signing. It was, it was actually the most lovely thing, not, not the weirdest thing, but that's, that's my answer to that question. I've never had a bad experience. Is that the question? Uh, funniest or best fan experience? Or I've never had a funnier. <laughs> you go first. I got to think about this. Yeah, that's a really tough question to answer because we meet. We're fortunate that we get to travel the world on occasion and meet so many of you. And I don't know. I guess you know. Funniest. There was a guy who was dressed up once as a Jaffa, but his costume started to fall apart. This was, I think, in Australia, and. And he, then he dropped his staff weapon and then something, and I felt so bad for this guy, and I was stuck behind the table trying to <laughs> see pieces, and then the, the coup de gras was that the tattoo just blocked on the table. <laughs> so terrible for him. Bless him, wherever he is. I had a great one that was the weirdest experience I've ever had. It wasn't even, it was fan related. I was in the airport. Uh, at a gate waiting to board a plane in France and these uh, uh, two Air France workers were behind the counter just kept looking over at me and I just noticed okay they keep looking at me all right whatever then I went up and they said are you Gary are you Gary Jones before I'd even given them my passport and I said uh, yeah I am uh, and they and the woman then pulled out two eight by tens for me to sign. <laughs> she said, oh, we thought it was you. Would you sign these? I, I thought I was the only person who walked around with eight by tens of you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, there's two, there's two Air France workers. And then it got, and I said, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm not even gonna like question it. And I went, yeah, sure, got a pen, signed it. Okay, thank you. And they go, oh, don't go, don't go. She hands me a, like, a, like a sticky uh, notepad. She goes, uh, would you mind drawing an elephant? <laughs> and again, I go, yeah, sure. Sure, as you do in France at an airport. I draw an elephant, and she goes, wow, that really looks like an elephant. It was surreal. And I said, yeah, because you asked me to draw an elephant. And I said, why, okay, fine, why am I drawing an elephant? And she said, well, one of the workers here uh, likes to collect uh, elephants drawn by quote unquote celebrities <laughs> and she's got a ton of them at home and I didn't even know I guess I could only imagine that they knew I was coming through the airport or something I don't know but it was bizarre Gary were there, were there pictures of you? <laughs> just yeah just right, there were pictures of me yeah yeah there were pictures of me um, this, this is going to be a very, very silly question, so forgive me about that. I would really appreciate an answer. If there was an animated episode of Stargate with a crossover with Disney, who would, which Disney characters would it be, and what do you think the story would be? If there was a Stargate crossover with Disney, which Disney character would in the story? You see, I'm a producer. I just know those You're two companies would never come together. 
I'm going to say I would be Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally Jiminy Cricket. Actually, I think technically we could use Mickey Mouse now legally. Yeah, statute of limitations or whatever it's called. Is the question what... Which Disney character would each of us be? No. Oh, no, which, what, what would the crossover be? Stargate Mickey! <laughs> wow, huh. Oh. Um, All I can think of is Dumbo, and I don't want to look at anyone when they say it. In the, in the cartoon, in the animation, the cartoon of uh, Ben and Me, remember Amos Mouse in Ben Franklin's hat? Try Cornman. I'd be in. I don't even think that was the question. I'm so lost up here right now. Okay, we're gonna focus. Here we go. Next question. Next question. So sorry. Hi. Um, I've kind of got two questions. My first one is for Brad. It's sort of a question. Can you please, please, please? just do a round off of what happened to Starlink Universe so that we don't just end with that cliffhanger and keep driving in the same. I just, <laughs> I want to know where they end up and if you cross the crew and if Eli's okay, so. Well, <laughs> here, here's, I don't want to give away the whole thing because A, we don't have the three and a half hours we're taking to walk it through it. Okay. But B, I don't remember the whole thing. I will say this. It had a lot to do with the original mission, to find that event that happened before the Big Bang. An event of an intelligence uh, prior to the possibility of that intelligence existing. And, and, and uh, it involved Rush um, being a big part of that. I see now I want to know. Please make it. <laughs> you know, if I could just, everyone, right? yes. <laughs> if I could just make it, we would have done it. No, you're bad. Okay. There's so much, so just, much has to happen. It just had so much potential, and it was just so sad that it kind of got cut at that point. And, and, it, and it was genu genuinely because MGM went bankrupt, and that's the reason. Well, how we, dare they? Yeah. <laughs> and sorry, my other quick question, I do probably. Um, it was. For, for all of you, obviously, in SG1, what was your personal favorite episode to make? What, what story did you enjoy the most, or what do you think was the, the best, just for the script? Or... <laughs> um, was anybody here yesterday? Yes. All right, same answer as that. <laughs> Making out with that girl. <laughs> And, you know, the story was good, too. <laughs> I, you, wasn't was there, there a few of them? There was oh, a few. And the one I remember the most is when I, we did the episode Grace, where we talked about this yesterday also, so forgive me. Stuck alone on the ship, and then thoughts raising, and what do you really want with your life, says my dad, and this little girl running around, and then the scene with you, where we end up kissing, but at that point, something's blowing up behind us on the ship and so there's all these sparks and it's very you know dramatic suggestive that sparks flew when they kissed so they kind of did as i recall see yeah and so mine, grace and she mine was her. mine was um heroes part one and two because yeah. Because I got to be uh, part of the, the archival video, the, you know, the videography, and uh, interviewed by Saul Rubinek, and it was just the best when I read the script, and it was just me, just going, he's going, okay, here we go, tell us about your job, and I said, well, I opened the gate and I closed the gate, and he goes, okay, and what else? And I go, nah, that's pretty much my job. <laughs> and to be able to say it like that was the great. Oh, and also I go, well, I said. Shot my wine shepherd too, and then I like to kind of shake it up at the end. It just like, <laughs> sounded like such an hours in that scene, but it was really, really fun to shoot. It was great to have, you know, to have the entire production take the piss out of my job. It was lovely. <laughs> Those were great episodes too, don't you? Yeah, really two. Great. Like for yeah. all of us, we're sort of quintessential. Yeah, super fun. Story episodes like last. 
Yes. Go ahead. How did you interpret, how did you sign um, Gary's taking a piss on his... <laughs> very, very small. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Made my weekend. <laughs> It's you we really know that. Hi, um, following on from yesterday and this morning, one, do they fit? <laughs> Your preference of underwear. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> What was the worst costume misadventure you experienced in the show? Well, the costume from Emancipation was just a misadventure from the start. <laughs> the blue one. Just, yeah, a lot of boobage. Mm. And, and then there was a headdress with little things dangling, and I just, it was insane. Lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> Did Brad write that? No, Jonathan rewrote it. Jonathan rewrote it. Yeah, that that was my worst costume misadventure. Just, I've never felt more uncomfortable. No, that's not true. But that that and the when I went in Enemy Within, I think when we start to go cuckoo or. Broken Divide, Broken Divide. That's another Jonathan one. When I was, uh, <laughs> I pull you into the locker room and start making out with I you. I told you. I know, but I tried on a tank top and shorts, and then when I came to shoot the scene, the tank top was suddenly a lot shorter and the shorts were shorter, and I was like, what? Did I gain that much weight and get taller? What happened? That's not what happened. But anyway, yeah, so I felt super self-conscious. Well, and happened? I didn't know you that well. Still, like, we were still getting to know each other. Well, we made out, <laughs> as you do. No, but why did your, your talks get smaller? Well, I did think some... that might have had something to do with somebody in MGM or it something. Did. It was not me, I swear to God. <laughs> but you're involved. No secret. Okay, so emancipation. Amanda sees me and she tries to get me to help her because she recognizes that the outfit she's in, and, I, and I'm kind of frankly mortified that she's being put in this outfit, but she's also in heels. So I walk and she goes, what do you think of this dress, Brad? <laughs> and I say, well, um, I'm sorry, I just realized I'm just staring at your breasts. <laughs> And she said, well, they're at eye level. <laughs> true, it's true. Big heels, by the way. Very big heels. Sorry. Oh, I think I have the next one. Hi. Um, so, or is he, he played these characters for so many years, and he's been off the air for, what, 15, 20 years now. Um, I think for all the fans, I, I know for myself, I watch it over and over again to this day, so to me, these characters are still so fresh and so now. So what are your relationships with these characters 15, 20 years on? Much the same. Yeah. Like, I still feel very close to Sam and very... I remember things about her that are really precise and for me, maybe not so much for Rick because he had done MacGyver, but for me certainly, she changed my life completely. Well, this man changed my life, Brad Wright, but Sam Carter changed my life. So I, I feel very close to her, always. Yeah. I, well, uh, I'll just throw this in. If um, if we could trans, if we could go back and no, stay the same um, time frame and 
pick up uh, the, was it a trio or a quartet? Of, it was a quartet. Of um, Stargate personnel that travel with the gate and all this stuff. I would do it if we could play it as though we were this old. Well, this old. You're still young. Um, I would do that in a flash, and I don't think I've ever said that out loud to, to Brad. But now I'm saying, like, so you're You did say that out loud to me. What's that? You did say that out loud to me. I, I wrote scenes in the pilot that happened just before the pandemic and then it, it didn't happen. Um, I, I wrote General Carter. I wrote a. Uh, was Jack O'Neill retired? Jack was re retired, but. <laughs> Circumstances dictated that they, she said you might even get recalled in the, under these circumstances. And at one point, he said, I'd love to see you. I still have your toothbrush. <laughs> I'd only use it once. <laughs> My teeth have gone bad. <laughs> I think that's all the time we have. It's looking like it says time's oh, up. Stop it. Oh, you so had it. to say something. Why? We were going so we mediocrely. I know. Can we go a little longer? Yeah. I don't see any okay. blue shirts around. Hi, gu hi guys. Just a question for all of you. Um, with the beginning of any new series, I suppose there's always the risk to know, well, if they're going to last, basically, beyond the first few seasons. At what point did you sort of really kind of get the realization that it was going to last, that you're onto something really special as a, as a TV show? We knew, like, after the pilot that it was going to go two seasons, and then we, I think... No, we knew, we knew right away. We had an episode, 44 episode order. Yeah. Oh, it Before the end of know, season one, we knew we were doing five seasons. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was special, and I had two completely different names, and I was still in the show. <laughs> but, but I made a joke in, a, in an interview about, uh, I think we have enough stories for ten seasons, and I said that in an interview in season two. And we went ten seasons, but I was kidding. <laughs> I think after six, it was just like every year it was a gift. And then we kind of got a little, like, used to being told we were going another season, and then when Rob Cooper called us in to say when we were starting season 10 that we weren't going to be coming back, this would be the last season, we were like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Man, we just keep getting picked up. But we're doing some movies, we said that. Yes. But we're... And then we did those two movies, and we hoped we were going to keep doing those movies, and then the bottom of the DVD market fell out, and that was that. question because we already answered. Uh, I was wondering, uh, so the topic of mental health in the fandom is starting to get really big. So I was wondering how you guys uh, deal with like anxiousness or stress or all, that, all those kind of not really great emotions that you can sometimes get. You know, honestly, I, I, think it is, I think it's important to keep that conversation going uh, because there's a lot of stress in, in the work. And, and, uh, and I'm actually, Amanda's doing a book and I'm, and I'm actually, I think I'm writing the forward for it. So it's a project I believe in. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, what is your best memory of the late Cliff Simon? The best memory of the late Cliff Simon. Well, I, I didn't know, I mean, I wasn't tight uh, with him, but I was... Uh, 
well, I don't even know if it need be said. We were kind of neighbors, or at least he visited a, a beach around or near where I live. And I, w I had driven past uh, where he had met his end, um, like about two hours after it had all happened. And uh, there was still a lot of hubbub and stuff. And I, I asked um, one of the, I can't even tell the story. I mean, it was basically one of those revelations that someone you knew semi-intimately um, was just gone and um, kind of uh, affected me. And again, I didn't know him very well. These folks knew him quite well. And um, I, I don't know what your reactions would have been, but spill the beans. Yeah, it was really shocking. But, you know, everyone kept saying, but he was doing something he loved. And I was like, yeah, but he's not here anymore. I mean, my memories of Cliff, he was so fun to shoot with. And of course, our characters had a very toxic relationship. But, and I got to punch him, which was fun. But um, <laughs> was hanging with him at conventions. And afterwards, when the actors, would, you know, we'd go for dinner or something, and getting to talk to the man that he was. And he was so full of, he laughed really easily. And he was such a joy. And so my memories not, are not so much from on set, but just sitting and sharing a meal and laughing. Yeah, he was a lovely human. He was a lovely man, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He lost some good ones in the last few years. He lost Carmen. And uh, Carmen or Jensi, I don't know. Yeah. Hi. I know you both said that you would go into the new Stargate if, it, if Amazon or MGM ever get around to doing it. If Sanctuary or MacGyver came to you as well and offered you the positions and you could only choose one or the other, which ones would you choose and why? I'd definitely do MacGyver. <laughs> Would. No, I, it, it, this is, maybe I'm just, I'm retired, but I kind of don't think I should be or, or want to be, really, because the thought of doing uh, MacGyver again as an old guy like this would be so much fun. I mean, think of the scenarios of trying to fix stuff and he can't keep his hands from Shakespeare's or something he forgets and it's I don't know the possibilities are endless. Yeah. I MacGyver, was... how do you do how do you disassemble this bomb? I've no idea. I can't remember. I don't know. I would do, I would do sanctuary again in a heartbeat. <laughs> Stargate came along. Hi. Gary. Would you do Stargate again if it came along? Or MacGyver or Sanctuary? Yeah, I would, for sure. <laughs> Hello. If you couldn't make up new names for your characters in Stargate, what would you call yourselves? New names, make up new names. New names for our characters? Characters, yeah. Ron. <laughs> Just Ron, though. You Just don't need Ron. a last name. No last, nothing. Just Ron. With two ends. <laughs> you just stay a little longer. Ron. Yeah, you have to hang on to that second end. Ron. I think I just give myself the middle name Ray. You know what I mean? Walter Ray. Walter Ray Harriman. Good choice. <laughs> well, I can think of a really goofy or slightly perverted name, so I'm so afraid to say any of them. Oh, 
Daisy. Daisy and Ron. Okay, to the start, That's eh? a spin-off. Take it. He's been on a lot of work to Daisy and Ron. Show. Or the Robin and Daisy. No, it's better if it ends with Ron, so yeah. you hold the end. Because then you can hold the end longer. Daisy yeah. and Ron. Hey, time, time's up again. No, oh, no. no. It's okay. It's no, look, we're getting more time on top. That's nice. That's not nice. exactly. intense. We're going we're... into the negative now. <laughs> oh. There you go, folks. It's been the cast. Of Stargate SG Land. Let's hear it for all them. Brad, Amanda, Richard Dean Anderson. Thanks, everybody. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that. Uh, if you did and you like my channel, please support my channel by subscribing. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to everybody that is subscribed to my channel already. Appreciate you folks a great deal. Make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. And as always, embrace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.